think there's three things which will happen in my mind. One, I think it's fair to say that we all will become individual brands and will become much more aware of it. Um, and just to, to, to point out this direction, in New Zealand recently it was discovered that Facebook was doing a, an experiment uh, enabling people to upgrade their impressions among their friends in the light categories and other different features. So basically, if you want to be more visible on your friend's page, you can actually pay for it and then you'll be more visible on the list. Now that's the first indication we're seeing that suddenly we as consumers will be asked to make considerations not about other brands but about ourselves as a brand. Um, Facebook uh, has introduced now another feature which means that if you endorse a brand online uh, then you may get some sort of discount from that company and then they will take your endorsement, even your photo and your quotation and put it on all your friends' websites or their their Facebook page. Um, what's interesting is it won't be everyone, it will only be the ones they know are aspiring to you. So they will start to do a hierarchy between who's looking up to you and who's not looking up to you. So now we'll suddenly see that you will become a very, very integrated part of how to build brands yourself. And that requires consumers to have an ethical guidelines themselves. Now consumers today have been able to wash their hands and say it's the company's fault. But now they become the brand. And that of course will change everything dramatically. So that's the first thing which will happen. The second thing will be the extreme degree of contextual. Um, and I sort of invented that term some years ago. I call it contextual branding and contextual marketing. And, and when I predicted this around 15 years ago, uh, what I was thinking about was the idea of that you walk down the street, someone is, is sending a message to you, and that message is exactly contextual to the moment you're in. The first time I saw that for real was in Japan, where I walked down the street in Shibuya, in Tokyo. And, and this message came to me and said, uh, Martin, one of your friends is in the area. Would you like to meet the person? I clicked yes. He said, Starbucks would like to introduce you to the friend at the nearest Starbucks. We'll give you a free cup of coffee. I clicked yes. And I found my way to the nearest Starbucks, and here he was. That is contextual branding, sending the right message to the right audience at the right time. Now, this is happening online as well now. The latest we're seeing is that, for example, a concept coming out of Brazil called Predicta is enabling the system online to be able to uh, change the content on your home page depending on where you were visiting before. Nece not necessarily with your permission. So that means, let's say that you are going into a, a website like Carrefour, right? Mm -hmm. And you have just received a kit at home, you're a new family, you go into Carrefour's home page, it's all about cars, and you don't need a car, so you leave. But what if that when you went into Carrefour, just a second before you went into Carrefour, you went to Pinterest, and the system notices you're uploading photos of babies. That information will go in a split second before you even going into Carrefour. Just when you click on the mouse, will go into Carrefour and they'll customize the entire home page around you liking kids. So they'll only be babies. Now, that sounds like science fiction. This is reality. And <coughs> the reality now is going to go even further. In the future, everything will be contextual. So that means when you walk around in a supermarket, depending on what your profile is on the Facebooks uh, and, and the Googles, uh, Gmail, whatever it is, where they now are ranking you based on your popularity and aspiration level. So if you're really popular, you are more attractive for advertiser than if you're not. Then that data will go into the supermarket and you will shop around and notice on the little display the prices for Pampers is surprisingly low for you because you happen to have a strong voice. So this is the level we're seeing where context will really go far. I did not predict that um, 15 years ago, but certainly that's very clear for me that's going to happen right now. Of course, ethical, here we come, right? So that's another aspect. But the third thing I think we will see is that everything will become a game. I think that gaming will be everywhere. We see that already now with doctors being trained in how to do operations, complex operations in computer games. The whole military in the US is basically trained on computer games. We've seen that coming into the schools. But in the future, everything will become a game in branding as well. That means that if I want you to drive your car in a more economic, friends, friendly way, so to save fuel or stop your engine, instead of me saying, you have to be careful about the environment, because you don't care, you don't want to, why should I care? Let me build in a pop plant in the dashboard. Pop plant was growing. So if you're really nice to the environment, the pop plant grows and there's a flower on. But if you're really bad, then the pop plant dies. And this is happening right now with Ford. And it's amazing. People drive against the pop plant. They're obsessed with the pop plant. And this will go much further 
we will see that we build into a toothbrush. When you brush your teeth, you'll get points. Uh, or for example, if you take the bus, you'll get points which will redeem with tax returns or whatever it is. So that would be in every dimension. So brands will become indirectly gambling devices. That's probably, I think, three different, I can predict 700, but I think these could probably be three interesting trends we'll see.